the simplest form of motion is the uniform linear motion. By definition, a body performs a uniform linear motion if it moves along a straight line and travels equal distances in equal time intervals. In the left-hand side we can see a ball moving with a constant speed along a straight line over a surface. In the right-hand side the path of the ball is shown with the velocity vectors of the ball in two different points along the path. If a body is moving along a straight line then its velocity vector always points into the same direction, that is in the direction of the motion. Then the angle alpha between the velocity vector and a fixed direction remains the same during the motion. If the moving body is traveling equal distances in equal time intervals, then the length of the velocity vector is always the same along the trajectory of the motion. Then we can see that the velocity vector of the body is constant during the motion. As a result, the acceleration vector of the moving body is zero. A typical example for the uniform linear motion is a car traveling on a straight highway or road with a constant speed. The engine of the car provides the mechanical power to make the wheels run and keep the vehicle moving forward. At the same time, the running engine also needs to overcome the aerodynamic drag and friction between the tires and the road resisting the forward movement. This example demonstrates the everyday experience that we normally need some external effect to move a body with a constant speed along a straight line. However, if we leave our everyday environment in Earth and study the motion of objects in space, then we see that the uniform linear motion is a natural state of bodies. When an astronaut pushes a small object in space, the body moves with a constant speed along a straight line until it collides with the wall of the spacecraft. Now, let us derive the equations of motion in the case of a uniform linear motion. We have already concluded that the acceleration of a body traveling along a straight line with a constant speed vanishes. That is, the acceleration A of the body is the zero vector. By integrating of the zero acceleration, we obtain that the velocity of the body is a constant of the integration. Let us denote the constant velocity with the vector v0. If we integrate the constant velocity v0 then we obtain the position vector of the body. The result will be the velocity vector v0 times the time t, plus a constant vector of integration, let us say r0. The position vector r0 is the starting position of the body at the time t equal to 0. As time goes by, the body is leaving the starting position r0 and moving in the direction of the velocity vector v0. The distance s covered by the body during its motion is just the magnitude of the difference between the position vector r and the starting position r0. Then the distance is equal to the length of the vector v0 times the time t, minus the length of r0. It is convenient to apply the Cartesian or rectilinear coordinate system when we want to derive of the equations of motion for the uniform linear motion. First we choose the surface on which the body moves as the frame of reference and we attach the coordinate system to it. Then we align the x-axis of the coordinate system with the direction of the motion and describe the position of the body with the coordinate x. The initial position of the body can also be chosen as the origin of the x-axis but we consider the general case where the body is in the point x0 at the time t equal to 0. Then the vector equations of motions reduce to the scalar equations for the x-component of the kinematic quantities. As a result, the equations of motions in Cartesian coordinates are the following. Since the acceleration vector of the moving body is zero, each of its components vanishes. Then the x component ax of the acceleration is equal to zero. The y and z components of the velocity v of the moving body vanish, and its x component vx is equal to the constant v0. By virtue of the choice of the coordinate system, the x-axis points to the direction of the velocity of the moving body. The y and z components of the position vector are of the moving body vanish, and the x component is equal to v0 times t, plus x0. That is, the body travels in the along the x-axis from the initial point x0. The distance s covered by the moving body is equal to the difference between its instantaneous position x and its initial position x0. Now we show the graph of the velocity v of the body versus the time t. The body moves with the constant speed v0 which is plotted with a horizontal blue line at the value v0 on the ordinate. Since the distance s covered by the moving body in a given time t is equal to the integral of the speed over the time interval between 0 and t, it is given by the area under the line equal to v0. This area is shaded with green color, and it is equal to v0 times t. We can also plot the distance s as a function of the time t. Since the distance s is equal to v0 times t, we have a straight line running from the origin with the tangent v0, that is the angle alpha between the x-axis and the line is equal to the speed v0, which is the ratio of the distance to the time. If the time t is given on the abscissa, 
We can read off the value of the distance s from the ordinate with the help of the line representing the velocity in this plot. 